This video is brought to you by Anchor. Okay, so I am a sucker for monitors. I think we all know that by now, especially gaming monitors, simply because I very much like high refresh displays. However, more often than not, it's very hard to find a gaming monitor that also meets productivity, especially for people that are used to the MacBook's retina displays. A few weeks ago, I got the chance to finally put together my condo desk setup, and I'm actually quite happy about the monitor I chose for it. You see, this here is the M32U, ARM Edition Monitor by Gigabyte, a monitor that very much packs up productivity and incredible gaming features all in one. And gaming features on a MacBook can be a game changer. For starters, high refresh rates can go a long way on a MacBook setup. Everything is snappy and smooth, meaning that most productivity tasks like scrolling through code, going through your board designs, scrolling forums like Reddit and so on, make your experience a lot more enjoyable, especially if you have a MacBook 14 or 16 and you're used to ProMotion. Most gaming monitors nowadays don't even look like gaming monitors. In fact, I'd argue they more often look like traditional monitors. And not only do they almost look the same, but provide similar features such as HDMI ports, USB-C, great color accuracy, a white color gamut, HDR, and so on. It almost doesn't make sense for these companies to market these monitors towards only gamers, especially since your MacBook can take advantage of high refresh rates. In fact, with this monitor, I can go up to 144 Hz variable. The only thing is that if you want to get 4K at 144 Hz, you need to be able to transmit 40 gigabytes per second, which is why on my end, I connected my dock to the monitor via Thunderbolt 3 and the dock to the Mac via also Thunderbolt 3. This is why HDMI 2.0 on MacBooks can suck, especially because it transmits data at 18 gigabits per second compared to 2.1, which does it in 48. However, do note that even though the M32U has HDMI 2.1, it only offers a bandwidth of 24 gigabits per second. And so in order to get 144 Hz at 4K, it uses devices that support DSC to make sure it can hit 40 gigabits per second. So if you are someone that likes to pair their MacBook setups with a console or a gaming PC, know that they will all work fine except for the PlayStation 5. The PlayStation 5 won't look as good as other monitors since gaming at 4K 120Hz, it's limited at 420. In other words, 420 records less color information than 422. Now, does DSC or display stream compression affect image quality? The short answer is no, but with your MacBook, I suggest connecting it via DisplayPort or USB-C like I did. Just please make sure your dock can handle DisplayPort properly, as mine did not, and I was not feeding enough bandwidth to my monitor, which resulted in the monitor disconnecting every 30 seconds or so. Regardless, to fully take advantage of this monitor and its KVM feature, just connect it via USB-C. Look, to properly show you how much refresh rate has an effect in your image experience, I took three video samples, one at 30 hertz, the other one at 60 hertz, and the last one at 144 hertz. I ended up slowing them down to properly show you how awesome refresh rates can be when doing productivity work. On my end, I found that it makes micro adjustments easier to make. They also seem to respond slightly faster. And this can be things like editing small little objects on Adobe XD, Playing with my voiceover on Premiere, making sure that my audio waves match, the smoothness makes me feel in control and thus more confident in my movement. Without realizing it, high refresh rates really lightly makes me faster at these smaller movements that can add up tremendously over time. Especially with this monitor where you get up to 144 hertz, which also has VRR with FreeSync and G-Sync support meaning we get a high refresh rate where the image gets to be drawn on the screen faster without any tearing thanks to VRR. But note that VRR is not a feature the MacBook gets to benefit from. However, if you are a console player, quick note, HDMI on this monitor delivers VRR, so you'll get to benefit from that. My little concern when it comes to VRR on the PlayStation 5 is since we are at 24 gigabits per second instead of 48 with 2.1 is, does this still support VRR? 
I'm not quite sure. If you guys don't have G-Sync or FreeSync on your monitors, you might not be able to tell, but I am not experiencing any sort of tearing on the screen right now, which is good, but I just don't have the tools to properly measure this. And so I say, beware. I've been doing some research on this and I can't seem to find a proper answer. Now, this here is the ARM edition, meaning that when you actually take the time to unbox this, you'll realize that it doesn't come with a standard stand. This here comes with a very nice ARM VESA mount kit. In other words, a clamp that is super well designed to protect your desk surface and super easy to install. I must say the arm itself is actually very well designed. It's not made out of metal, but it definitely feels extremely sturdy. Now, other than that, this monitor edition does come with some standard cables. You get an HDMI cable, display port, some power cables for different countries, and even a USB 3 cable. Further into the unboxing, you will find some manuals and a warranty card. Inside those, there is quite a bit of a guide on how to set this up. I suggest checking it out because I got ahead of myself and well, I realized that I had forgotten to attach the clamp to the arm after I had already installed the clamp to the desk. But once you take your monitor out of this box and you properly install the clamp, best amounting it takes two seconds and at a first glance, it looks so freaking good. I did pair this panel with the Anker PowerConf C200 2K HD webcam. For my setup, I wanted something minimal and aesthetic pleasing and because it delivers a 2k resolution with a privacy mode i asked anchor to send me this one instead of the c600 i have at the office this here gives you so many mounting options either on top of my monitor or on a tripod arm if you prefer it delivers a 95 degree wide angle field of view and the privacy feature is actually a physical switch extremely satisfying to enable by the way now with the anchor work software this really becomes alive it's a software that allows you to change the the angle and frame of your webcam, you can change and explore the audio pickup patterns, and you can very much tweak the image the 2K lens output. Which by the way, it's extremely nice, and I very much recommend you use the directional mode just because it picks up less of the surrounding noise. Now, if you don't want to tweak your image brightness, don't worry, there's an automatic low light compensation feature to help you out. Honestly, I think overall, a good monitor definitely deserves to be paired with a good webcam. And I suggest you check out Anchor's products down below. I'll leave a link to their PowerConf C200 in the description. As much as I like a proper webcam to live on my displays, I definitely admire the fact it lives on this 32 inch 4K IPS panel. Now, when it comes to PPI, this is definitely nowhere near as close as the brilliant liquid Retina XDR display with 250 pixels per inch. However, at 140 PPI, this monitor is quite good. It also offers a peak brightness of around 350 nits with SDR content as advertised. It's a monitor that gets fairly bright, especially in a room like mine, which is moderately well lit. I do feel like if it was to get brighter outside, especially when playing games or consuming HDR content on Netflix, I would want to turn the lights off. And unlike the crazy 1,600 nits of peak brightness the MacBook delivers in HDR, the Gigabyte only delivers 420 nits. It's definitely a bit brighter than SDR and almost close to my personal favorite sweet spot at 500 nits. I'd say for most people, it's more than enough. Although for myself, I do feel like this beautiful HDR content lacks a tiny bit in a bright room. I do have to mention that as much as this is a great anti-glare panel, I am so happy that the text clarity in this is incredible. The anti-glare coating really does not have an impact on it and smaller details such as text never seem to appear grainy or anything like that. So overall, things on the screen like text, icons, figures, fine little details are very crisp and clear. As for the IPS panel itself, when it comes to horizontal viewing angles, it's okay, nothing too crazy. In fact, from my point of view and my own tests, I think the colors seem to start washing out after a 50 degree in terms of viewing angle. And for the brightness, it seemed to be a bit higher at around 60 degrees. However, vertically, it is a lot better. I really wish I had the tools to accurately measure this, but but if you want to mount this above eye level, it would take quite a lot for colors to wash out and experience loss of brightness. Generally, if you only want a monitor for programming and productivity, I usually tell people to avoid high refresh rate gaming monitors. And that's because 
most of them heavily suffer from uniformity and picture quality. But this year, like I've been saying, is the perfect mix of productivity and gaming. The evenness of the screen is actually very good. It can display a solid color very well across the entire screen. This is something people that consume content, create content, or even watch sports should care about. Bad gray uniformity would cause dark patches around the edges of the screen or a smearing effect in the center. However, because contrast ratio on this monitor is not as good, black uniformity is also not as good. The local dimming feature on this monitor, which dims the backlight of the monitor to improve the depth of blacks, is really not that noticeable. Because this only has 16 zones, at times you can tell which zones are on or off, it can be a tiny bit distracting, and so with mediocre contrast ratios and a local dimming feature that is not as good, there's quite a bit of blooming around smaller bright objects in a dark scene, but like I said, this monitor tries its best to very much include both of best worlds. And I think that within its color department, it does it very well. The color accuracy out of the box is almost perfect. Honestly, way better than my LG Ergo monitors at the studio. I haven't had the need to calibrate this and the colors are fairly close to my iPhone display. The best setting for me when it comes to editing pictures and editing some videos is sRGB mode. And so I do love the sRGB color space in this monitor, it's actually pretty good. With DCI-P3 at 90%, I feel comfortable editing my 422 footage files from my Sony FX3. I will say most picture profiles look really good and I also admire that the overdrive setting doesn't ruin the image too much. There's a bit of overshoot in Smart OD, but it really isn't enough to notice it while scrolling through text or switching between windows. I honestly just recommend to leave the overdrive setting to picture quality and call it a day. Now, if within your MacBook setup you happen to have a console, let me tell you that this is one of the best gaming monitors out there. Very impressive since they also tried to make this great for productivity work. Gigabyte implemented a feature called Aim Stabilizer, and unlike most gaming monitors, Aim Stabilizer actually allows you to have black frame insertion and VRR on. You just need to make sure HDR is off on your console, you use a gaming picture mode, and you enable Aim Stabilizer as well as disable FreeSync. This overall allows for Aim Stabilizer to eliminate motion blur for fast-paced games, but also eliminates tearing on the screen. It makes your gaming experience so much better by trying to provide you with a persistent image across the full frame. Note though that it's only a feature worth enabling when playing high refresh rate games. Also, input lag is amazing on this monitor. The delay between the graphics card sending a frame to the monitor and the monitor displaying that frame, it's like non-existent. I did a bit of research and our things did find with their testings that at a native resolution it hovers around 4.3 milliseconds and this number also appears within their VRR test. There's also basically like no ghosting at all when going through the overdrive settings except for speed. Avoid speed and like I said, just keep your overdrive at picture quality. And so as a whole, all of this can be tweaked within their OSD. Some people find the positioning of the menu system bad on my setup with my workflow I actually don't seem to mind it. However, with dual monitors, I would see why it would be so bad. This also has a KVM switch that very much allows you to control your peripherals. Now, if you press the joystick that lives below that button, you will discover the OSD. The OSD not only delivers the current settings of your display, but it also delivers accessibility to the ports. This here has everything you need, of course, like HDMI 2.1 as discussed, display port, USB-C, and of course, some of the ports for KVM. When it comes to KVM for the Mac, by the way, it's, it's, it's amazing. Because of USB-C, if you do decide to connect it like I did, because that cable carries video and data, you can very much just directly plug your two cables for the keyboard and mouse and have a clean setup like so if you ever need your keyboard and mouse for your Xbox or PC. On my end, because my monitor and Mac connect to my dock through USB-C, well, what I did is that I connected my USB-A hub and mouse to the monitor, meaning that all my peripherals, including my black magic pad, my audio setup, and my mouse with keyboard connect through USB-C. 
If I was to bring a custom PC into the mix with the upstream cable, everything would connect. It's actually quite clean. As for the rest of the menu, it's pretty easy to navigate. There's no learning curve or anything like that. Things are super easy to find. And I honestly like the fact it gives you the current status of your display output. It's a great menu and I love the simplicity it delivers. It doesn't scream, look at me, I'm a gaming monitor. Now, is this the best minimal gaming monitor for a MacBook? I honestly think so. The M32U is one of the most popular gaming monitors out there, especially for the price. This is definitely an amazing overall monitor with 4K resolution, high refresh rate, great response time, colors, and input lag. It's a good productivity monitor with lots of features. I think MacBooks definitely deserve to be used with gaming monitors, especially for those who like to take advantage of high refresh rates. And I think this here tries to combine the best of both worlds. Hopefully this review made sense to a lot of you guys. I have been enjoying my monitor quite a lot lately, especially since I finally fixed my dock. Anyways, I'm signing out guys. Take care and happy new years. Oh, 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 oh,